Hi, and welcome to Tractaganda number five. Okay, whoops, having a little trouble there. Um, today I want to talk about uh, GMOs and some, some issues that we're having with the GMO debate. Uh, first up, uh, I, I want to discuss this thing with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, I love the man as a communicator. I do not love him as a scientist, uh, particularly when he steps outside his own uh, specialty realm. But uh, here we go. Let's listen to his own words discussing GMOs. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm amazed how much objection genetically modified foods are receiving from the public. Uh, it smacks of the fear factor that exists at every new emergent science where people don't fully understand it or don't fully know or embrace its consequences and so therefore reject it. What most people don't know, or they should, is that practically every food you buy in a store for consumption by humans is genetically modified food. There are no wild seedless watermelons. There's no there's there's no wild cows. Okay. So he goes on for another couple of minutes talking about apples and roses and things like that. Okay. And for the most part, he is right. Uh, the the bulk of scientists in the genetic genetically in the genetically modified uh, fields uh, refer to uh, all uh, forms of genetic modification as genetically modified organisms. And this includes artificial selection, uh, genetic engineering, uh, plant splicing, um, and a wide variety of other methods of, of getting an, an organism to do what you want it to do. Um, once upon a time, we were friends with wolves, and we started saying, well, you know, we want the puppy with the long ears. And and in short order, we had dogs, okay? Uh, we specifically artificially selected them for friendliness, for companionship, for guardianship, and mostly not to eat us. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's true that, that we've been tinkering with the genetics of other organisms for a very long period of time. However, the difference in the current GMO debate is not about GMOs, oddly enough. That's sort of the, the banner coverage for anything that's had its genetics modified. The current debate is over GEOs, or genetically engineered organisms, specifically any organism that has had its genes tinkered with in a laboratory by somebody using viruses or something like that. Uh, in short, using methods that weren't necessarily available to that organism through you know, uh, natural selection. Um, natural and artificial selection are, are just, you know, guidances. In fact, I don't think if you really you know, put a pin in it, there is no such thing as artificial selection um, because natural selection occurs based on pressure and humans simply applied selective pressure to these organisms to get them to do what they wanted. And when selective pressure yields the capacity to procreate, that's evolution. So we evolved them naturally by providing our own selective pressure. And this is really no different than a couple of episodes ago talking about the cat that likes red birds. Okay. Um, the cat may or may not consciously be thinking, hmm, them red birds is yummy. Um, and because the cat doesn't have uh, the capacity to uh, to herd and, and raise birds, uh, you know, I mean, it it's, feels pretty lucky to just catch them and eat them. Uh, it can't grow better, redder birds. 
So, and that's really the big difference between uh, them and us. Um, there are other creatures that do herd and farm. Um, the, it's been observed uh, in dolphins that they herd tuna fish. Uh, and it could be that they are putting some sort of selective pressure on them uh, based on their particular set of needs or could. Who knows? Um, so it, I'm willing to continue to call this artificial selection, but uh, when it comes right down to it, we're, we're talking about just natural selection. Um, GEOs, on the other hand, are not. They are using techniques that are not readily available in, uh, uh, in nature. While it's true that the actual insertion of the gene using a virus is fairly common, this is how uh, the human Im immunovirus works in pretty much any disease. You know, a virus comes in, injects its material. The thing is, is that uh, this process is known to be extremely caustic to uh, the receiving cell. Um, more often than not, the cell explodes uh, after uh, becoming a processing plant for more viruses. Uh, so uh, we're thinking, first off, this may not be the example that we want to take. Um, Second of all, the, the virus has done its own share of evolution, whereas when we're talking about GEOs, we're talking about a, a genetic strand that has been uh, either taken from a, 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 an organism that should not be able to reproduce with this. You know, we're talking about taking something from a fish and injecting it into a wheat plant. When are wheat and fish going to mate? Not going to happen. So let's start there. Um, and secondly, uh, you know, some of these genetically engineered uh, sequences are utterly artificially created. They are specifically built molecule by molecule by humans in a sequencer, inserted into the virus, and then injected into the cell with hopes that it will uh, take. And it, it is an incredibly long process because more frequently than not, they don't take. It's like one in 10 or 100,000 that do take, and even then, not all of them express properly. So it, it's, a, it's a difficult process. What bothers me is that in, um, in a histrionic uh, and volatile subject like the GMO debate, throwing confusion into the problem is reprehensible. Um, in, in this little clip, uh, while it's true that scientists refer to all genetically modified organisms in, under the same bubble, the debate is actually about GEOs. And by trying to straw man this and brush it under the table by saying, well, We've been doing genetically modified organisms for tens of thousands of years. <laughs> Why should you be afraid of it? Because we're doing it differently now, Neil. Um, because we're we're actually injecting things. Um, what scares me about this, and, and, and so it, my point here is that this is easily as disingenuous. Uh, from the scientist point of view, trying to sweep this under the rug as the creationists saying, well, you know, evolution is only a theory. It's taking two different definitions of the same word and or, or term and using the wrong one. This is a classic straw man fallacy. Um, it is a misappropriation of definitions. It's wrong. Um, so, uh, what uh, what people who are are in this GEO debate are, are about? Um, are mostly about these uh, g genetically engineered things, not about genetically modified. And we'll, we'll get into that in the future episodes. Thanks a lot.